In this video, I'm going through Pure One, Chapter 6, and I'm going through the sine and cosine rule, which was on the GCSE, the higher GCSE. The advanced uh, trigonometry, it's called. So firstly, we're going to go through labeling any triangle, whether it's a right angle triangle or not. This is how you can label any triangle. So um, the vertices are all capital letters, um, and we're going to label the angles in all capital letters. So this is angle A, this is angle B, and this is angle C, all capital letters. The side opposite angle A is A in lowercase, lowercase a. The side opposite uh, angle B is lowercase b. And the line opposite, um, the side opposite angle C is lowercase angle C. So A, B, C, the angles are all capital. A, B, C, all lowercase. And it doesn't matter what the um, angles are called. This is still a capital Y, capital Z, capital X, lowercase x, lowercase y, lowercase z. Same here, all capital letters for the angles, P, R, Q for the sides. So this is how we label the triangles. The sign rule for finding sides is this. A equals sine A, so A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. These ratios, if you put them in, they will all have the same numerical values. When you come to use the sine rule, you will only need to use two. You never need to use three. For finding angles, it is a bit easier to put the angle part, sine A, over A in the numerator. If you don't, you can still rearrange the equation and manipulate it and get the same answer. It just makes, um, makes it a little bit easier to put the angle part on top. And again, you would only ever use one of them. So let's have a look at the first example. Find side x. So these two could be a and a, and these two could be b and b. All you need is an angle and the opposite side, the angle and the opposite side. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a pair where one of the things is missing, either a side or an angle, and I want a full pair, an angle and a side that I've got. So I've got, I want to find a side, so I put the side first, A over sine 35 equals B, which is 3.7 over sine 85 and I cross multiply which basically means um, I'm multiplying those two together so I'm multiplying here so I now have a equals 3.7 sine 85 times sine 35 that will give me the side x so here's my calculator I have my fraction 3.7 over sine 85 close brackets times sine 35 close brackets. And the side is 2.1 centimeters to one decimal place. So that's the sign rule for finding sides. The sine rule for finding angles, again, I can call this A and A, and I can call these B and B, and it's going to be sine A 
over a. Again, I put the angle part at the top in the numerator equals sine b over b. So sine x over 6.2 equals sine 42 over 5.4. And again, all I do is multiply by the 6.2 to get rid of the numerator, the denominator rather. Sine x equals sine 42 over 5.4 times 6.2. But I haven't finished because I don't want to find the value of sine x, I just want x. And that's your extra step when you're finding angles. I need to reverse the sine, so I'm using inverse sine on the calculator. So x equals sine to the minus 1, the inverse of sine. Sine 42 over 5.4 times 6.2. And again, all of that can be put on your calculator straight away. So to get inverse sine, it's shift sine. And I'm going to have my fraction sine 42, close brackets, over 5.4. Use my arrows times 6.2, close brackets, equals. And the angle, I'll give it to one decimal place, the 9 rounds the one up, so 50.2 degrees to one decimal place. So that's the sign rule, finding sides and finding angles. Now, the sign rule has something called the ambiguous case. Every time you use the sine rule to find a missing angle, not a side, but an angle, there could be, not always, but there could be two possible answers. And I'm going to show you why that is. It's actually very easy to find the other angle um, numerically, but I'm going to show you why that is. So, this Example says, sketch a triangle with sides 7 cm and 8 cm and an angle of 50 degrees. The angle is not trapped between the two sides. So it's not between the two sides and that's the case where the ambiguous case will happen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to sketch my 50 um, degrees. So from 0 to 50, that's my 50 degrees is there. And then I'm going to get my ruler and I'm going to put the 8 centimeters in. So, okay, I've got, there we are. That's eight centimeters and 50 degrees. So I now know that this is 50 degrees and this is eight centimeters. The other side, not this one, because the angle should not or cannot be trapped between the eight and the seven. So basically this side, um, has to be seven centimeters. That's what I've been asked to do. So I get my ruler, and this is GCSE construction, and I get my compass, and I put my compass on the ruler, and I open it up to seven centimeters. Yep. And I put my compass here, we are and I'm moving this down and I'm going to start there we go and you can see that it's crossed twice and what this means is the following 
I can have this triangle that triangle is going to be um, 8 centimeters by 7 centimeters so this is 7 centimeters but there's another possibility of another triangle and that one is also going to be a 7 centimeters so let's have a look I'm going from the top to there that is a 7 centimeter as well so there are two possible triangles and using the sign rule the calculator will give you this angle this is the acute angle the ambiguous case is where you are trying to find that angle here which is the obtuse angle note this is a an isosceles triangle so this angle here is also a so I'm going to show you what the two triangles will look like this is the acute one that we've called A. And this is the obtuse one. So how are we going to find this? Firstly, we can only find the acute one using um, our calculator. So if I call this A, this is A and B, and this is B. I'm going to use the sine rule, and I want to find an angle, so I'm gonna put it on top, sine A over eight equals sine 50 over seven. So I'm going to have sine minus one, let's get my calculator up, up and I'm going to have shift sine brackets sine 50 over 8 times 7 close brackets is that right uh, sine 50 over 8 that's right sine 50 over 7 is the other way around so, delete, so, eight, go back, delete, seven, that's it. So, sine 50 over seven times eight. So, it gives me 61.1. And for ease, for this example, I'm just going to say that x1 is 61 degrees. Okay, so this is 61 degrees. Now, if I go back to the first one, if this is 61 degrees, then this is 61 degrees because it's an isosceles triangle, and the obtuse angle is on a straight line with that one. So my obtuse one, this one, that's x2. So how do I find x2? How do I find this one? Here's my um, 61 I do 180 minus 61 and it's that easy to find the obtuse angle to find the obtuse angle you do 180 minus the acute angle and you get the obtuse one and just to uh, kind of bring the point home you may remember from GCSC the sine graph and the sine graph from 0 to 180, we'll have, when we're solving equations, we'll have, or often we'll have, two solutions. So it will have a solution here, which is um, an acute angle, less than 90, and it will have a solution here, which is an obtuse angle, bigger than 90. 
So every time you use the sign rule to find a missing angle, there could be two possible answers. To find the obtuse angle, you do 180 minus the acute angle. How do you find the acute angle? You find it using the sign rule. So let's have a look. Um, and of course, you will check how do I know if the sign rule is a possibility? You check that the two angles added together, so the obtuse angle, the big angle, and the other angle given. So if I go back here, uh, let's have a look. So for that triangle, I am told that this is 119. Well, let's, and I have another one which is 50. So let's get the calculator. 119 plus 50. It's less than 180, so I know what this angle is. It works. But if the two angles added together is 180 or more, that's not possible because you still have a third angle. Okay? So you check. If they say find the obtuse angle, then you know they want you to give the obtuse angle. But if they say determine, are there two possible answers? Then you can check. So um, we've done that. Okay, so we found the obtuse angle for that um, on the smart board screen. And we're gonna look at this. Are there two values for x? Is there an ambiguous case? So I'm trying to find, I'm gonna call that A and A. I'm gonna call that B and B. So sine x over six equals sine 71 over 10. So let's go for x equals sine minus one. I'm multiplying here. So sine 71 over 10 times six. And I get my calculator and I'm gonna put it in. So shift sine fraction sine 71 over 10 times 6. So this is x equals uh, 34.6 and it doesn't tell me uh, the level of accuracy so I'm just going to actually round it to the nearest degree so I'm going to go for 35. So x is 35. That means that the obtuse angle would be 180 minus 35, which is 145 degrees. OK, so let's determine. Check. 145, which is the obtuse angle, plus 71. Do you see what's going to happen here? Plus 71 is 216. Therefore, um, the obtuse angle is not possible. X can only be 35 degrees. So this is um, the sign rule with the ambiguous case.